So in the last week of October 2019, I happened to read a post from a friend who's a scallop diver mentioning that he'd seen a purse in the inner sound of sky uh, just a few days prior. So after a few messages backwards and forwards, it turned out that he'd been out on one of his boats um, and one of his divers had come up with a purse and had said, do you know what this is? And he'd answered, it's a common skate purse, put it back, which they had done. And I got quite excited and after a few more messages backwards and forwards, managed to blag my way out on the scallop diving boat um, a few days later. So just at the start of November 2019, um, went out on a trip with the guys. Uh, they were obviously working, so still scallop diving. And they, were, they very kindly took me out on their own, you know, off their own backs, basically, uh, for free and dropped me in a site where the scallop diver said that he'd actually seen a few purses over the years were his words. Uh, so it wasn't the original site where this purse, this single purse that they'd found, mostly because he wasn't entirely sure where that had been. Uh, so he took us to a site and dropped us in and away we went. So we dropped down uh, on the 8th of November, I believe it was, uh, 2019. And initially we entered the water and sunk down. It was just over 30 metres depth, so reasonably deep, but still light enough to see. We swam around for a while on the seabed. It was a gravelly sea bottom and there was no purses evident. In the distance I could make out a, a sort of raised area of boulders. So we decided to swim over towards that. And within a couple of metres of getting over the boulder field, we found a couple of purses nestled together down between two large boulders. So after taking a few photos of the initial purses, we surveyed a little bit further afield and within 25, 30 minutes, found over 40 purses just in this one spot. So I came up from that dive extremely excited. Shortly after Chris returned to the surface, I received several excited messages. And what a find. As far as we were aware, this was the largest egg laying site of the critically endangered flapper skate to be found off mainland Scotland. Absolutely amazing. So a couple of days after I returned from my dive trip, um, I sent an email around various organisations, including Marine Scotland, Scottish Natural Heritage, SNH, who are now called Nature Scott, um, and a lot of different uh, conservation organisations like Shark Trust and people like that. Basically asking, what could we do to try and protect this area that I, I thought and has since been proven to be of national importance. After trying a few different contacts, it was confirmed by Marine Scotland on the 25th of November 2019 that Nature Scott were going to organise a survey of the site to actually verify its existence. The egg cases were found to be at different stages of development, so from freshly laid all the way through to actually hatched as well. So it does potentially indicate that this site may be being used by multiple females. So it was another six months after the survey in March uh, 2020 until something else happened that made me think about it again, basically. And it was a story of the juvenile flapper skate that had been hatched in captivity at St Andrews. And had been, it, was, it was a fascinating story. It had been over 500 days gestating, so a huge amount of time to spend in the egg. So a few days later, I managed to organise a meeting with uh, a bunch of people from the Our Seas Coalition, which is a group of now over 100 organisations and individuals and some, some multinational corporations as well, um, all interested in protecting the seas in Scotland. It was during these talks that we discovered that another site had been brought to, to a diver's attention by a, a scallop diver, where he'd found multiple flapper skate purses on the seabed. And by the time they got back to resurvey the area, unfortunately, the area had been dredged and it had been entirely destroyed and there was no flapper skate purses there uh, left intact anymore. So we knew it was very, very important to get back to this site and double check that it was still intact. Because no one had visited the site since March 2020, we decided to organise a revisit for the 14th of October 2020. We obviously adhered to all of the COVID guidelines at the time. We got together a group of like-minded individuals, divers uh, and some videographers and topside people as well, along with the Creo fishermen and the scallop divers who agreed to take us out to the site again and organised a, a survey basically to resurvey the site to double check that it was the eggs are still there for all we knew it had already been dredged and destroyed. During that visit back to the egg laying site, 
we undertook five dives and counted over 120 different egg cases at that main site. They were again all at different stages of development and most were scattered here and there between several boulders. Although we also found one incredibly dense patch. It was only about two meters squared, but we'd got about 40 egg cases counted in that area. We also dived a couple of nearby locations and found egg cases at both of these sites. So it does suggest that perhaps this area is more heavily utilised by female skates than we first realised. So following our successful resurvey of the site, um, Blue Marine Foundation put together a media package to be pushed out to various outlets. Uh, the Herald picked up the story and it was actually aired on Sky News as well. And that generated a lot of interest right across the country. Um, we were able to put pressure on the government um, and we were hoping that it would lead to permanent protection for the area. On the 15th of January 2021, we had a Zoom meeting with Nature Scott to discuss our concerns. We were concerned, namely, that all activities were going to be banned from the site, which we thought was overkill, especially because Nature Scott had only originally identified dredging and trawling as being severely impactful for the site. On the 3rd of February 2021, we had a Zoom meeting with Marine Scotland. During that meeting, they did confirm that they would be making their recommendations to ministers by the 5th of February 2021. On the 10th of March 2021, an announcement was made by ministers that protected the site and the surrounding area. Overall, it came to six square kilometres and was designated as an emergency marine protected area. This designation came into effect on the 17th of March 2021 and is temporary for 12 months. We are delighted that the egg laying site has been recognised as an essential habitat for this critically endangered species. However, because all activities are now banned from the site, including the low impact fisheries, we are concerned that these measures will disadvantage those who originally advocated for protection of the site. We're very concerned about the message this is sending to citizen science. Will people still be keen to provide data to the government if they're then going to be banned from that area? Having spoken directly to scallop divers, anglers, creel fishermen, my main concern is that if the area is given no take zone status, which once again would be amazing for the skate, it's going to have a knock on effect, a long lasting knock on effect, I think, with citizen science in general. If people can't, if people don't feel that they can come forward with information without them being penalised for that information, um, financially for the creel fishermen and scallop divers, um, then it's going to put a real barrier between that citizen science, which, to be blunt, that these guys are the eyes of the government underwater. Recreational divers, scallop divers, creel fishermen, they're the ones that see these areas being impacted. And without them, nobody would know this site even existed. This is, however, a temporary solution. And we hope that we can all work together, Nature Scott, Marine Scotland, and all of the stakeholders to develop permanent protective measures that will take effect following the emergency MPA.